pleural membranes. The pleural membranes are found lining the lungs. And to understand them, let's take a look at some of the anatomy in this cross section where in color we can see the external intercostal red, internal intercostal in yellow, and then the inner, innermost intercostal there in blue. And then we see the ribs there that are kind of in a brown color. And they surround um, where these pleural membranes are just internally, that there are serous membranes that help uh, surround the lungs and to have fluid to help them to move without friction. And of course, those surround the lungs and the lungs receive and take away air via uh, the bronchial tree. There's the bifurcation of the carina into the right and left primary bronchi. So the pleural membranes that are surrounding the lungs are like two plates of glass and a drop of water. So there are two plates of gla glass and here's a drop of water in the middle. And so as those two plates of glass come together and they touch the water and then <laughs> squish together, they now have, through hydrostatic pressure, stay vacuumed or suctioned together. So now they don't pull apart. However, you can still move them around. And so this is very similar to what happens with regards to the parietal pleura, the, the layer that lines the internal surface of the ribs and internal intercostal, and the visceral pleura, the mesothelium that lines the external surface of the lung, where the parietal pleura and visceral pleura can move upon themselves, but they stay vacuum sealed together, thus reducing friction and yet allow them to still move. So the parietal pleura that's outlined on the right lung in this uh, oblique view in the step to section, uh, everything in blue is parietal pleura. Now, anatomists have gone to the extent of naming the different parts of parietal pleura. And so the part of the parietal pleura that lines the internal surface of the ribs, we call costal parietal pleura. The part of the parietal pleura that lines the top dome of the diaphragm, diaphragmatic parietal pleura. The part that lines where the mediastinum is located by the heart, that's mediastinal parietal pleura, flanking that side of the heart. And then the part that projects up into the neck, they call cervical parietal pleura. All of its parietal pleura, mesothelium, um, are just naming the, where it's located. Visceral pleura that's in red is what's found intimately associated with the outside parenchyma of the lung. Um, this is the part that's part of the lung. And the pleural space is the space between the parietal pleura and visceral pleura. The root of the lung, that's where the visceral and parietal pleura come together, where the bronchial tree and pulmonary vessels enter into the and exit the lung. The costodiaphragmatic recess is an interesting um, thing because there in yellow, we just take a section of the bottom of that lung on the right, we blow it up, and the costal diaphragmatic recess is an area where there's a double membrane of parietal pleura and in that area, and it's doubled upon itself, and it leaves a space. Now, this is significant because when you inhale, your lungs expand, and notice that the tip of the lung goes in and fills that costodiaphragmatic, costodiaphragmatic recess, and then you exhale. Inhale, it fills it. Exhale, it then leaves that little recess. It's called costodiaphragmatic recess because costo for ribs, diaphragm, it's that recess between the ribs and the diaphragm. Let's talk about the innervation of these pleural membranes. So first, the parietal pleura that we see outlined in turquoise in this picture, and another cross-section through the chest, and showing in turquoise there where the parietal pleura would be lined. It's the ventral ramus that is really an intercostal nerve that courses around through that body wall between the innermost and internal layer of, that, of the intercostal muscles. They send off these tiny twig branches that are sensory all along the parietal pleura. So it's the intercostal nerves that are providing innervation of parietal pleura. Intercostal nerves are somatically derived, so this is including pain, temperature, touch. Now the visceral pleura that's more there in lime green, that's, oh sorry, parietal pleura as well, except parietal pleura we haven't discussed the mediastinal or diaphragmatic parietal pleura. It also receives somatic innervation, but its innervation is via the phrenic nerve that arises from C3, 4, and 5 spinal cord levels. So that's what provides somatic innervation of pain, temperature, touch to the mediastinal and diaphragmatic parietal pleura. Now our visceral pleura, this one receives innervation 
but because it's associated with the viscera itself, this is sensory autonomic, but it's visceral sensory, where that information travels, visceral afferent neurons, neurons travel along sympathetic pathways, and notice that it goes in through the dorsal root. Um, and then we also have um, visceral afferent neurons going along parasympathetic neurons, uh, going back to the medulla. This information is things such as stretching of the uh, smooth muscle, change into the diameter of the airways, damage to the tissues, things of that nature. And that's innervation of the pleural membranes.